Good afternoon. My name is Uta Wien. I'm based at IGE Delft in the Netherlands. And as coordinator of the Afro Alliance project and on behalf of all the Afro Alliance partners, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this first webinar in a whole series of webinars that Afro Alliance is now setting up. This first webinar is entitled Strengthening African Stakeholders to Face Climate Change Impacts, the Afro Alliance project activities in a nutshell. And that's exactly what we're trying to do today. We're trying to give you a teaser of the many activities that this project has engaged in over the last four and a half years. The work we do as Afri Alliance is set squarely within the context of climate change impacts in Africa. And unfortunately, we're seeing increasing manifestations of these climate change impacts with um, droughts, floods, um, regional differences, of course, but also more extreme weather events. And as the African content is facing these water and climate challenges, at the same time, we also know that there are existing solutions, there's existing knowledge and innovation around, but we also see that there's quite a gap between the two, they don't quite meet. And this is where we've set our work as Afro Alliance. We're trying to act as a bridge for climate change and water related needs with potential innovative solutions. So we're trying to um, serve as an alliance of networks by connecting existing networks. Overall, the main objective that we have is for African and European stakeholders to work together in a whole number of areas, water innovation, research, policy, and capacity development with the overall goal of strengthening the preparedness of African stakeholders for future climate change vulnerabilities. We do this also in collaboration amongst a set of African partners who are networks from diverse stakeholder groups, local authorities, water service providers, researchers, scientists, etc. And the same from Europe. So we're bringing two sets of networks and um, partners with a very international scope together within our consortium. And so as a consortium uh, ourselves, we're trying to do what we're trying to do for the African continent at large. We're trying to increase collaboration across different networks and across stakeholders from Africa and Europe. In this first webinar, uh, we're honored with to have with us a whole range of speakers from the Afro Alliance team as we um, focus on the project in a nutshell. Uh, you've met myself already. We welcome also David Smith from WENB. Natasha Amorsi from WAYO, Mamboloreng Tlagali from WRC in South Africa, Chris Manners from ITC, Jean-Marie Kelesche from Botanet, and Taryn Quell from ICLE in Africa. And you meet them all in turn as we go through a, a series of short speed talks. Um, you can always post your questions in the chat as we go along. And our speed talks actually followed by uh, a lengthy question and answers uh, session where we can come back to the questions you've posed throughout. So without further ado, I will hand the word to David Smith, who will uh, feature to us the Afro Alliance stakeholder map. Thank you very much, uh, Uta. Yeah, so just to uh, give you a, a brief overview of one of the first uh, activities that we, we undertook uh, within this project was to have a greater understanding of who exactly are the stakeholders at an African and uh, European standpoint. And uh, these were all the uh, stakeholders that are involved in water and climate uh, activities. And one of the ways that we were able uh, to actually achieve this map was through social network analysis. Social network analysis is a, is a way of uh, understanding the relationships between organizations through using uh, networks and, uh, and graph theory. So it gives us an idea of how we can analyze uh, these connections, why they connected and, uh, and the strength of that connection between each of these, uh, these organizations. So this uh, network map is available on the Afri Alliance uh, website. Uh, if you just search for uh, Afri Alliance stakeholders, it will, it will come up and you can have a play around with it and, and to see exactly who is connected to whom on, the, on this map. Uh, for example, if you would like to have an understanding of uh, who the main actors are uh, within the, uh, the network, you can uh, easily do that through the different metrics that are available uh, for, uh, for use on that map. Uh, or indeed, for example, if you'd like to uh, do a project uh, in Ghana, for instance, um, you can type in 
uh, on that map, Ghana, it will bring up all the uh, different stakeholders uh, that are that have been identified. And uh, you can see exactly how they connected to one another and indeed how they might uh, connect to your organization. If you aren't yet featured on that map, then write to us and we'll be able to, uh, to send you a, a short survey that will give you a, an understanding of who you connected to and how. And, uh, and then we'll update the, that map to make sure that you are indeed featured uh, within that, uh, that map itself. So this is just a very short uh, outline of exactly what is uh, this uh, stakeholder map all about. But if you'd like to, uh, to delve in a little bit deeper and to know a little bit more about this uh, Afri Alliance uh, stakeholder map and, and who those stakeholders indeed are, then, uh, then of course you can uh, join us for the, the final Afri Alliance uh, conference that will be held in the, towards the end of October uh, as part of the Waternet uh, uh, conference. So uh, join us there and, and we can run through uh, a lot more in detail about the, uh, the Afri Alliance uh, stakeholder map. With that, I hand back to Tuta. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, David. Um, I will take the floor myself to uh, talk us through the approach that our alliance has taken to matching needs and solutions. Indeed, it was very important to know who the stakeholders are, but in, in trying to strengthen uh, the um, ability of African stakeholders to face climate change, we also needed to drill down what their needs were, particularly we were interested in uh, what we call organizational needs, so at um, different organizational levels, different stakeholders there, river basin organizations, water utilities, uh, local authorities, civil society. So we adapted, uh, adapted an existing approach, the value proposition canvas to an analysis of these organizational needs. Um, and did this by involving 130 stakeholders from 36 countries using a structured uh, approach for workshops uh, and interviews to really get a better understanding of what those needs are. Um, from the solution side also there, and there was a big scouting effort uh, undertaken by our partner Wayo, um, who um, via the network of the LF Alliance partners and further searches, we were able to identify 131 solutions. Having said that, um, there, is, there are differences in the level of uh, advance um, of these different solutions, particularly as they uh, should be applied in different contexts till adjustments and adaptations um, are needed. And also thematically, um, we see that there are certain gaps, uh, particularly in the field of biodiversity management and water, food and security. Now, this was not just an exercise to generate paper tigers, we have turned these insights um, into an online tool, which is available on our online portal. Uh, namely, we uh, have created this uh, needs and solutions hub um, where uh, stakeholders are able to um, understand what are different needs uh, faced by distinct stakeholder groups. So this is very interesting, of course, uh, for solution providers who want to see who potential uh, customers might be. Um, at the same time, also stakeholders in need of solutions can look through the um, solutions database and see what existing solutions are already available. Um, moreover, solutions providers can, of course, add their solutions uh, to this hub. Um, and also, we're also continuously further uh, expanding our needs analysis. So it's also possible for stakeholders to point out additional needs uh, for perhaps additional stakeholder groups that we haven't been able to analyze yet in detail. So we actually have a, a webinar dedicated to the Needs and Solutions Hub, our approach to building it and how it can be used uh, by different users. So you're welcome to join webinar four in our series. And towards the end of this webinar, we have more details on the specific timing of this webinar. I'd now like to hand over uh, to Natasha Morsi from WIO, uh, who will talk us through what is a SIP. Thank you, Uta. So um, as you can notice, we have a very good progression in this webinar because we have just seen that through the process, a lot of solutions have been identified. And one of the crucial activity as well of Afri Alliance was to promote the solution, but in a certain way, not just on the technical uh, aspect, but really to consider the technical and non-technological non-technological, sorry, techn <laughs> technological solution. So as you can see on the graph, you have three other dimensions that will 
um, come there to highlight different perspectives to answer the different needs that was uh, that were identified. So the social innovation is really there to tackle the complexity and the societal challenges that also have been identified through uh, uh, our own networks in working obviously as an equo to what has been before us identified on the, uh, the African continent, but as well in Europe. So in addition to the technological solution, you will find the capacity development, the governance structure, and also one dimension that is maybe less obvious to capture, which is the business roadmap, where we tried as well to provide a good insight on what could be the financial dimension for the social innovation. Throughout the, the project, four series of SIFs uh, has been uh, produced, as you can see, and within one series, you would have different subtopics to cover those four dimensions. And I think, I don't know if... Um, this is where, where Mama Lodin comes in. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Mama Lodin. From, from the WRC, um, Mama Lodin, if you could kindly share with us your reflection on the use of the Afroline social innovation fact sheets for the work of the WRC. Thank you very much, Uta and Natasha. Maybe just to start firstly with where Natasha left with regards to our social innovation fact sheets as a... Um, Afri Alliance really looks at these four dimensions, if I may say that. So from the Water Research Commission perspective, the value that we saw in the social innovations that we developed through um, the partnership with all the other Afri Alliance partners is the way we normally present our innovations. We had not used this approach, if I may call it that, or the dimensions. So it helped us as the Water Research Commission to take the innovation or the solutions that we already had and apply this four dimension, which then showed us actually that the one solution that we were thinking as more technological had also the, the three other pillars. And we are now using this um, dimension as we present our innovations going forward. And um, another thing that I think I liked is with the Water Research Commission, what we do is when we have innovations produced through uh, the work that we fund, we normally produce a science brief, a technical brief, a policy brief, if it's relevant and so forth. And the way the social innovation fact sheets are packaged for us was a new innovative way of presenting this uh, brilliant innovations it's a, in a much easier read and, and, and acceptable way by our stakeholders. So it's really the packaging, I think it's, it's a very good one. And then the other issue that maybe I should reflect is with regards to the way we share our innovations at the Water Research Commission. So we will post it in the Knowledge Hub, we will market it through our social media and so forth. But what I liked about the social innovation um, factions of the Afri Alliance team is then you have a multiply effect by working with the other partners in Afri Alliance. We also get to reflect this thing in the Afri Alliance website. So we're reaching out to more people than we would have if we're just using the WRC networks and platforms. And maybe lastly, to say that I think the fact that we used the um, social innovation fact sheet for water monitoring for our MOOC was a brilliant one because with that, we are not only having a one way of sharing this social innovation that we have identified as Team Afri Alliance, but we provided a platform for an interactive session with the beneficiaries or the people that can learn even how you apply or you start thinking about this kind of dimensions when you develop social innovation. So I think it was a brilliant one. It provided an interactive thing between us, the um, Afri Alliance team and our stakeholders, but also further uh, provided some skills and sort of training on those social innovation fact sheets. So it wasn't just a paper that shows, mm -hmm. but people were able to now understand it better. And I think from the Water Research Commission, those are the key things that we have learned and we're going to use even going forward with our social innovations as we market them, as we make sure that people are aware and promoting uptake and use of those social innovations. So I think it was a job well done by the team Afri Alliance and a lot of learning from us as the Water Research Commission. And I think I'm speaking on behalf of all the Afri Alliance partners that the way we handle the social innovation fact sheets, it was a very innovative way and very effective and efficient way of promoting social innovations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for those uh, reflections, uh, Mama Loading, and, and uh, really alluding to us the very different ways in which the social innovation fact sheets um, have benefited the project and are also able to, to really permeate our insights through the respective partners' networks. 
So I will now hand back to uh, David Smith from WENB, this time uh, to talk us through the demand-driven action groups um, that Afrilines had set up. Yes, thank you, Uta. Um, so exactly that, demand-driven uh, innovation action groups. Uh, action groups in this sense are communities of uh, practice, demand-driven because they've uh, come from a bottom-up uh, process. So each one of these uh, 10 action groups that we set up across uh, Africa um, were given the opportunity to uh, identify local problems and uh, to solve those with uh, local solutions whilst involving not only um, entities from that area, but also international, both Africa and, uh, and European. So each one of these, uh, these action groups were completely open and free to decide how to go about uh, doing their, their activities and, uh, and were able to bounce their ideas off us as, a, as an Afri Alliance uh, consortium in terms of how they were moving things forward. There was a question actually posed uh, uh, by Zenebe uh, in, the, in the chat, and I think this uh, works very well with, uh, with what the actual action groups were looking to, uh, to achieve, where, where you have actually mentioned that there, there needs uh, to have greater collaboration uh, happening at, a, at an African level. And uh, this, this is obviously looking at climate change adaptations, etc. And that's exactly what the action groups were, uh, were all about. The idea of uh, collaborating, working together uh, from different uh, African organizations, institutions, and, and indeed local, uh, local entities that, uh, that were bringing together the, the expertise or the problems that they faced at that uh, local level and overcoming them uh, together. So uh, it was really uh, this collaborative uh, idea that was brought forward through these, uh, these action groups. Uh, you mentioned that the, at the end of that question, the idea of capacity building and, and uh, the, the fact that it's, a, it's another issue that needs to be brought forward. And indeed, uh, this was uh, one of uh, quite potentially the more important focus areas of a lot of these uh, action groups is that not only were innovative activities taking place at each of these, uh, at each of these action groups, but indeed, uh, capacity development was also uh, some of the core activities that they were they were looking at. So, uh, I'll invite uh, uh, yourselves and Ebe and 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 all the others that, that have interest uh, to have a look at the Afri Alliance uh, website uh, to go into the demand driven action groups, and uh, you can see exactly what type of activities each one of these have uh, managed to do, how they've collaborated together, and uh, what are some of the problems they've managed uh, to solve. So, thank you. Back to you. Uta. Great, and also we will have more detail about them in webinar three uh, of this series. Um, another uh, aspect that Afrilines had been uh, trying to do was to strengthen the monitoring and forecasting capacity in order to help African stakeholders to deal with climate change. Here, I would like to hand over to Chris Manners from ITC to talk us through the Afrilines approaches to this. Uh, thank, thank you, Uta, and the all. Uh, in Africa Alliance, we also engaged uh, in strengthening monitoring and forecasting capacity for, for water and climate, and also the processes in Africa. So this is to support, in fact, uh, African uh, and European water professionals, and also the public, in, the public in general, in collecting and finding and analyzing information on water and climate for their particular or special region of interest or also the whole continent. With our African partners, we developed three solutions to support the collection and analysis of, of this water, water and climate data and information. First, we developed uh, what you can see, uh, an Africa Alliance uh, a geodata, an open geodata web portal that contains information on water and climate data sources available for the continent. This open web portal uh, permits you to browse and to find the metadata, which are descriptive data uh, and, on sp and spatial information on water and climate across Africa. So what do these data mean and where you can get them from which data web pages, for example, you can obtain and download them. As in second, uh, we developed a triple sensor approach for collocated analysis 
of multiple and independent data sources and how to compare them. And triple sensing is about getting and comparing three independent water or climate information sources, for example, rainfall, and finding the most reliable one for your geographic location of interest. So in Africa Alliance, for example, we combined, for example, which is not done usually, combined conventional meteorological station data with satellite sensors and, for example, also citizen and crowdsourced data. For example, you can play the online demo. We made and developed a, a toolbox in an online demo. So you can play the online demo on how citizens, for example, perform uh, versus conventional rainfall stations and satellites in Burkina Faso. For example, here you have also the web, uh, the, the access, the web access. So you can browse that active demo to see how, how the triple sensor approach is works. You, you can also download, for example, if you have some more GIS experience, the triple sensor demo, demo toolbox from, from the, from the Afri Alliance of our website. As a third tool, we developed uh, the Afri Alliance Data Collection Handbook. The Afri Alliance Data Collection Handbook contains guidelines to, on how to set up, set up and design, in fact, a water point monitoring system in your area or region of interest. It focuses thereby on crowd or citizen-based data collection efforts. Specific webinars on all three uh, tools we developed or decision points we developed are available in, the, in, in one of the next webinars of, of Afri Alliance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. And indeed, um, this is also a big piece of work, which is why we've dedicated um, two further webinars to this. And let me also take this opportunity to say there are several webinars that we're repeating in French um, to, to make all our work more accessible to uh, French speakers in, the, uh, in African countries, including this uh, initial webinar, which will be held again this afternoon in French. Um, we've also realized we need to bring people together in innovative ways. Uh, we have set up a whole uh, two series of knowledge brokerage events. And with us today are Jean-Marie Kalesha from Waternet and Taryn Krell from ICLE Africa to discuss uh, what these events were and how useful they were, uh, for example, from ICLE's perspective. Over to you, uh, Jean-Marie, first. Uh, thank you very much, Uta. And uh, indeed, uh, for those who have been following us from the beginning, one of the key objective uh, of our free alliance was to, to, to create that bridge. And uh, that could not be possible, or we felt uh, as part of the Afri Alliance project, that it was critical to enhance or facilitate uh, the knowledge sharing, both on the online but also offline environment for all the stakeholders from Africa and Europe operating in the climate uh, and water environments. And as part of uh, this project, as uh, Uta just mentioned, we had two sets of knowledge brokerage events. The first one, which was regional in nature, we refer to it as the innovation uh, bridge uh, event. It was designed to serve as a platform where we could match needs from universities, council, companies, in terms of social innovation, when it comes to climate change, with potential collaborators, funders, investors, with the overall purpose of seeing the potential for commercialization, but also just to make aware people what are some of the innovation that are existing in that space, and ultimately possibly to, you know, to, to be able to, to foster the upscaling of some of those. And uh, the Innovation Bridge event were also designed as platforms where exhibition and demonstration of some of the innovation from Africa or from Europe could be made uh, public. First of all, from what was coming out of uh, Afri Alliance from the various uh, uh, 
technical arm, but also from the local innovators who were existing but not always known across, uh, across board. The second type of uh, knowledge brokerage event that we had were more localized, and we refer to them as roadshows. They were targeting more small to medium enterprises with uh, their innovations, and it provides a more localized opportunity for networking. And over the past few years, we've had a number of such uh, knowledge brokerage events. Four innovation bridge events were implemented. I'm not going to go to in details for all of them, but what I would like you to appreciate is the fact that uh, like in terms of our innovation bridge event, some of the key consideration that we consider we had was to do with uh, the geographical spread. As a result, we had an innovation bridge event uh, in Botswana, not only in terms of geographical spread, but also in terms of the content. So for instance, our IBEs were uh, in places like Botswana, in Cape Town, in Marrakesh, Morocco, but also in Uganda. And what I would like also to share with you is probably also the approach, because on one hand, we wanted some events that we convened ourselves as Afri Alliance, but in other cases, we were actually joining some of the existing uh, events so that we actually speak to some of the existing uh, stakeholders attending those events. As a result, one of the IBE was part of the Africa Utility Week or the INBO World General Assembly or even more recently, the Afro Congress that took place uh, in Kampala. It was literally the same approach that we had in terms of uh, the roadshows. And uh, for the roadshows, we had an opportunity to cover also regions like West Africa, where we had the opportunity to run this collaborative brokerage knowledge event in places like Accra, uh, Ouagadougou, of course, we, we came back again to Zambia and, and uh, Central Africa was not left out. We had uh, Yaounde in Cameroon that was also also to one of the knowledge brokerage event. So we, we, we in fact had that opportunity to make sure that uh, some of the innovation that were actually coming out of uh, the local apps were given that, pro, that opportunity to be shared uh, with potential funders and uh, donors for, for, for upscaling. So Uta, I think uh, this is what I, I wanted to share in terms of uh, the knowledge brokerage event. And I would want also just to invite all the participants this afternoon to register for the fifth Afri Alliance Innovation Bridge event, which is scheduled to take place uh, as part of uh, the WaterNet uh, online symposium. And it will be on the 29th of October, 2020. And everybody is encouraged to, to join and to have a sense of what uh, this kind of knowledge bridge event have been over the past years. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jean-Marie, and in, indeed, it's good to point out that the, the um, last Afro-Alliance Innovation Bridge event is just coming up. People can still join and, and get, a, get a taste of what these events are like. It's also a good opportunity because, as you see from the photos, we were blessed within the first years of the project to be able to hold these events exactly as designed, namely face-to-face. Um, given the situation that we have all lived through in the last six months, that seems like a luxury position uh, to be able to gather many people in rooms. We're no longer easily able to do that. So we're now transitioning to um, an online version of the Innovation Bridge event. Um, I would now like to invite um, Taryn Quayle from Eclay uh, to share with us her reflections on the, on the nature of these events and what it's meant for Eclay Africa. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Uta and Jean-Marie. 
Um, as Uta mentioned, I'm from Ikle, Africa. Um, for those not familiar with Ikle, we're a network of cities and local governments that are supporting a movement towards sustainable development. So our audience therefore is very focused on decision makers, both technical and political, and making key links to national, regional and international processes and institutions. So throughout the, the Afri Alliance um, project, ICLE has both hosted and participated in a number of innovation bridge events and roadshows. And we'd just like to take the opportunity to share two of the, the critical lessons from our engagements in the knowledge brokerage initiatives that we've learned. And so for, for us, one of the first is, um, and again, this goes back to what Uto was saying about, you know, in the, the days when we could meet face to face. Um, but one of the immediate lessons from the brokerage events was actually the structure that was adopted. So often we have in our traditional modes of engagement, we have a presentation and the delegates sit in the audience and there's very limited engagement in those formal sessions um, between the audience and the presenters. And what the structure of the Afri Alliance Knowledge Brokerage events allowed for um, was to actually adopt a speed dating approach, which allows delegates to move between different stations and visit and speak to different innovators following their pitch, which means they can engage with them directly. And adopting this process, we really saw dynamic engagement between delegates. We saw tangible synergies coming out in terms of identifying respective institutions, needs, solutions, and how they can form cooperations and, and engagements moving forward. Um, the other thing we noticed about this, this format was that it was scalable and it was easy to replicate across regions, between themes and across audiences. And that's the most important is that we need to have this co-production, this safe space where different audiences can meet and to engage on, on the critical topics that we're discussing. The second aspect of the knowledge brokerage events was actually the panel discussions. And this presented an opportunity for a focused dialogue, both on social innovation, but also how that relates to policy. And of course, from Ikle's point of view, um, policy is one of our critical areas of focus. So this was of great interest to us. And we saw that, you know, while Africa is a home and it's got a wealth of innovation, which was clearly showcased in these events, it's not often seen at that scale. So this was a great opportunity to really see all of the innovation that is mainstream or is available within Africa, but that we see is not strongly mainstreamed and is often even underrepresented in policy. When we talk about policy, we don't often talk about innovation. Um, so if we're going to support innovation to scale, we need to increasingly strengthen this link and identify opportunities such as knowledge brokerage events that can really connect decision makers with multidisciplinary stakeholders and to discuss how, very importantly, how this innovation can be mainstreamed into policy and to then focus on how we can get this to scale and how these climate and water innovations can get to market as critical next steps. And we saw the, the start of some of these dialogues and some of these recommendations that came out through these panel discussions that really um, highlighted the need for increasing the focus um, regionally and globally on these local but also regional knowledge brokerage events that can really then be upscaled from the local level into regional and international processes as key recommendations going forward. Thank you, Uta. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you also, Jean-Marie. I think together um, people have been able to get um, a first taste of, of what the Afro-Alliance Knowledge Brokerage events were about. And we have here an appeal for you to register at the final conference, which is coming up, um, where we have a number of sessions. Um, the Waternet Symposium, as Jean-Marie mentioned, is being held online this year. Um, and Afrolines has its entire track for its final conference uh, within the symposium, including the Innovation Bridge events, but also the stakeholder map validation event that David already mentioned. And we have uh, two more sessions focused on the various ways in which Afrolines has helped to bridge needs and solutions. And also we have a session where we'd like to explore with, uh, with you and other stakeholders how we can further enhance 
engagement and cooperation um, beyond uh, the Afro Alliance network and lifetime. I'm formally handing back to myself because I'd like to uh, briefly showcase how we have also tried to foster knowledge sharing in the online environment. Um, particularly, we have set up a, a rather elaborate online portal um, with, with quite a number of dedicated hubs. One of them being the Knowledge Hub where with no less than 12 categories where amongst other things you can find the entry to the stakeholder map, um, also to uh, more than 100 ideas that stakeholders have shared with us in our exploration of needs and solutions. We have a blog, job opportunities, funding opportunities, so many very relevant items uh, for various uh, different Afro-Line stakeholder groups. Um, importantly, we also feature um, an events platform uh, where um, we feature our own events, but also the many, many other events that are taking space in this field of water and climate. Uh, increasing, of course, these are no longer face-to-face -face events, so we're featuring a lot of the webinars that are going on. And if your event uh, is relevant uh, to the field of water and climate, particularly for African stakeholders, then please do um, submit your event and we will happily feature and promote it uh, via our communications channels. Um, the portal also serves as an entry point to a number of, of the outputs that have already been mentioned, such as the Afro-Alliance Geodata Portal, the social innovation fact sheets. You can explore the work of the action groups and you can find our uh, policy briefs that we have generated. Another way in which we have strengthened uh, knowledge sharing collaboration online is through two dedicated uh, MOOCs, uh, which we've made highly interactive. The first one was focused on water and climate change in Africa and was run in 2019. The second one ran earlier um, during the European summer, focused on the uh, uh, topic of social innovation in water and climate change in Africa. Um, and the content was provided uh, jointly by the African partners. And we Over a very innovative component was also the use of the forum uh, in both MOOCs. We had 600 um, and 850 participants, respectively. That's a large number of participants who were not just learning on their own, but the forum really provided uh, room for interaction and discussion and exchange and networking, um, so further enhancing the collaboration amongst these stakeholders. This has been uh, a quick tour of uh, some of the, the key activities that Afri Alliance has engaged in. It's now time to um, uh, turn to the questions that you might have. And I, I invite the uh, Afri Alliance partners also to share their video and, and join uh, the discussion here so we can see um, what questions have come up. Um, I saw also a question earlier coming up in French, so I'd like to repeat um, that we have um, this uh, webinar of Afrolines in a nutshell later on this afternoon at four o'clock Paris Amsterdam time. Uh, the first question, uh, David, you already um, uh, took to, and then there is another question from Zeneva. How do we integrate metrological forecasting techniques with indigenous forecasting techniques so as, so as to build robust forecasting system in Africa? Um, Chris, perhaps you would like to reflect on this. I think you partly alluded already the, the usefulness of the triple sensor approach in this respect? Yeah, I, if I if I, I was reading also the, the questions uh, with, with quite a, with, with a lot of interest. So I think indeed uh, uh, a triple sensor approach, like a, a triple collocation method, could indeed be uh, a, a method to, to uh, we look, we, we could, you could look into that to, to how to integrate indeed uh, local forecasting knowledge, like. If, Zeneve is mentioning with, with indeed each large uh, regional or global modeling forecasting data. So that, that could be done using that uh, approach we developed in Africa Alliance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And perhaps there will be more um, information coming up um, in the in the dedicated webinars that you have coming up in, uh, yeah. in November, yeah. December. Yeah, that's, I will take it surely on board. This, uh, this point is interesting. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to draw on my French speaking uh, colleagues from Afro Alliance to see um, what the precise content of the uh, uh, questions posed in French is. I'm not going to try and pretend that I can um, make um, 
a full interpretation. So um, perhaps Natasha, Jean-Marie, Chris, you would like to come in here and help. Um, Natasha is speaking. I can try to switch on my camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, as uh, you've mentioned, Uta, we, we can probably get more into the topic during the next uh, webinar. But uh, as far as I understand uh, the question, it's, uh, it's about how, depending on the climate uh, condition, are at Reliance approach and tools still um, efficient mm -hmm. for a tropical um, uh, region? So my, my first, um, uh, I like to answer that uh, that uh, question asked by uh, Benjamin. Thank you for the for the question. Is that as it has been explained, um, uh, the approach is mainly uh, demand driven with a bottom up approach. So along the process, we really try to tackle the local needs that we have uh, identified through different events that has been uh, presented uh, during this, this webinar. And the, the, um, the approach in terms of social innovation uh, fact sheet, in terms of uh, the hubs which bring together the needs and the solution are really um, something that can be applied no regard to the climate, but that are adaptive to the different uh, type of, uh, of climate. So we, we have developed some transversal um, in terms of climate approach. And um, I think really part of the, the, the answer is really the, the common ground of all our activities were demand driven and based on the perception, both from our uh, partners as well from, uh, from Africa and uh, as well from all the, the people that we have met along uh, the last, uh, during the last uh, four years. I don't know if my, uh, other French speaker colleagues would like to, to complete maybe my, uh, my answer. I think it was a, a comprehensive answer. Um, I would also like to um, highlight that we have uh, uh, 16 partner organizations in Afroline, so more than the, the speakers, there are far more um, of our partners present, luckily, in this webinar. I'd like to also uh, invite those partners to take the floor to further elaborate um, on, on aspects of what the Afroline's activities, um, how they have related um, to your respective organization's missions, how you've experienced the collaboration in the projects, etc. So if you have um, reflections to share, please feel uh, very welcome uh, to take the floor. And I think we also have more questions coming up. Uh, question about the action group. How can we part of Afro Reliance uh, since you're working as a regional center for capacity building and research in water harvesting in Sudan? And David, would you like to um, point out how to join action groups, the future of the action groups, et cetera? Yeah, perfect. Thank you uh, for that question. Uh, very pertinent, uh, given that uh, obviously one of the action groups is focused uh, specifically on the, those uh, activities. Uh, indeed, this is one of our uh, main aims uh, of the action groups is to identify exactly who uh, and which action groups would like to continue with, uh, with their activities. And in so doing, uh, we are holding a, a session within the, uh, the final Afri Alliance uh, conference, uh, the uh, Waternet uh, conference. Uh, and I think Tandai has actually uh, shared a link to that with you in, in the chat. Um, so by all means, register uh, there. And, uh, and of course, as it's on, online, uh, you'll be able to join us and uh, you can then see exactly how with, uh, with regards to the action groups, we can, we can try and uh, bring you together with, uh, with those action groups that are currently undertaking their activities and to see how they are looking to take their activities forward and how you can uh, join in with those activities that they're doing. So if you join us uh, there, we can, uh, we can definitely uh, uh, help to, to engage you with, uh, with the action groups. Excellent. 
Uh, another question pertains to um, where uh, Afro Alliance is busy. Is Afro Alliance ne uh, is the network active in all countries in Africa? Um, yes, as audacious as it may seem in principle, we're trying to cover no less than the entire African continent. Uh, having said that, you heard that we have what we call lighthouse initiatives. So we've set up a series of roadshow events, of innovation bridge events. Um, we had a, a set of 10 action groups. We can't work in every single country in the same way, um, but we try to set our events up such that um, we have regional scope, regional coverage in our events. Um, and so we try to be uh, embracing for all countries as much as we can. Um, we are also four and a half years into a five year project. So what we've done is try to um, test, try and test and validate ways of bringing stakeholders from uh, from different regions, from, from different stakeholder types, et cetera, together in new ways. And we hope that these ways of working can be taken up. Um, and of course, at the benefit of the benefit of all countries uh, in Africa, but that will um, involve an uptake uh, um, and that's way beyond what, what we can achieve as a, as a network of 16 partner organizations, but we're hoping um, to make these approaches available and, and share our experience, such as in the webinar here, so that others can learn and take this forward and, and find this useful. Then we have a question regarding to climate change uh, from Jerome. Climate change is expanded over time in nature, so why we work on adaptation rather than uh, reducing or mitigation. Um, I think we have some um, experts or whose expertise is closer to answering this question than, than perhaps my own. I'm thinking of perhaps Chris, that you might be interested to answer this question or some of the um, Afro Alliance partners who haven't so far taken the floor. Yeah, I could have a, a short intervention because with all two, of course, that's of course a very, the question which is always asked, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we are there's much talk this the last last I mean, last ten years on on adaptation, uh, trying to cope with climate change, which uh, in, and isn't there a way to to try to reduce this uh, yeah this global warming or uh, increasing CO two levels, eh? carbon dioxide levels. So that's indeed true, but that's I think there are also many efforts uh, on on the way let's say, in, in the world, to, so to speak, to try to reduce, of course, the uh, emissions, eh? uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and try to reduce, try to work on, on, from that side to climate change. But on the, in the day-to-day the -day practice, it's entirely needed to try to adapt, eh? to prepare yourself to changing climate conditions, I think. So that's the, I think, both today and in the international sphere, they, they work on both, uh, on both roads, adaptation and, and, and reduction. But I think for Africa, they propose more on, on adaptation. Yeah, I, I think we also see this back in our work of the analysis of what the societal challenges are. And we saw this intertwined nature of balancing water security, food security and energy security. And they, of course, have implications for, for both mitigation and adaptation um, as well. So, yes, it's I don't think we can focus just on one. Um, I don't think de facto we are we are doing that either in the work of Afro Alliance. Um, but overall, we also have a perspective, also a future perspective, how we can prepare um, African stakeholders for the future impacts. And of course, it would be great to reduce those um, further through a mitigation approach. But at the same time, we also have to be realistic uh, to understand just how hard it is to to um, turn the current climate change impacts around in a, in a measurable way. There are no open questions uh, at this moment, so I would like to um, offer the floor once again to any of the partners who would like to um, contribute and, and share further reflections um, before we round off the seminar, the webinar. Any of the partners? Hello, do you hear me? Yes. Hi, hey, hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, webinar, and I'm very glad to be here. And what I want to just uh, highlight is uh, uh, right now we are implementing the platform of knowledge management in Envo for the whole continent, and and we start some discussion with Chris to work with him and mm -hmm. 
And I want really to emphasize to this point because this is a very important point to our strategy and to the work that we're doing for all our members in Africa. And we have a lack of information about data and all those uh, um, information. So that I would, I, what I wanted to do with Chris, uh, even though I will translate in French, uh, but bring also our, one of our partners to talk about it and uh, or our um, or we just inform you about this uh, platform and what is the objective and what we're doing and what we um, what we uh, plan to, to 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 accomplish to this uh, this coming year because it is very important for us to just share with uh, all the partner here that we are having this platform and Chris have done a very an outstanding job for this geo portal. And we want to learn more about what 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 is done and how we can just capture some some information from him. So Excellent. this is something that I really want to to share with you. And I don't forget one promise that I have done, which is uh, bring the executive uh, secretary of uh, the World Water Forum to 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 have a webinar with with, with you guys because. It is a, since we are, we disseminate the maximum that we can do all mm -hmm. the information from Africa and and create a bridge. And uh, right now they are stopping uh, since we have since the COVID uh, pandemic they cannot just uh, have a, a new schedule to have the uh, the the precise date yes. of the next water forum. But right now we are waiting any moment to them to give us the right information so that we can just plan to do some activity with them because since they didn't have the they didn't have the visibility he didn't want to engage himself to do it uh, right after so Excellent. as soon as i have the information i will bring it to the platform so that we can organize uh, maybe a, a 10th or 11th webinar the 11th maybe i don't know so we can do it together Excellent. i wanted just to share with you with you okay. this information. thank you so much Bob. thank you Taryn, you also wanted to come in, please. Yes, please. Um, yeah, I would just like to, to share with participants just to note again that um, while Uta mentioned, you know, it's a four and a half year project, which is on its fifth year and uh, fast approaching, we do have the sustainability element in the Afri Alliance online platform. So that is through the website. Um, and I mean, we can showcase some of the materials there, but there's also the, the community um, mm -hmm. which you can join um, and you can then, you know, build dialogues and actively engage with the network. And then my second point is that the, the premise of Afri Alliance is really in the word Af Alliance. Um, and the idea behind the project was that it was an initiative, which was a network of networks. Um, and to try and address some of the gaps between organizations that are, are in tandem working on water and climate issues. So I would really encourage the participants who, who have further interest to look at joining the, the community online and also you know, looking into the, the network itself that formulates Afri Alliance and the various partners involved because we are all coming from a different viewpoint, serving different stakeholders, focusing on different themes, whether it be research, um, cities, SMEs, and there's there's further opportunities to connect with both the Afri Alliance project and with the partners that formulate that network. So I really encourage the, the delegates to look into that if they have further interest. Thank you. Excellent. Very well put. And with that, I would like to start wrapping up um, by pointing out the additional webinars I've mentioned this afternoon. We will repeat this webinar, but then in French. Uh, on the 21st of uh, October, we have webinar number three on how to create sustainable action groups. On the 4th of November, we will take you in detail through the Afroline's Needs and Solutions Hub. And on the 20th of, 26th of November, we have an English and French version, respectively, of the Afroline's triple sensor approach. And then on the 1st and 3rd, 3rd of December, we look into detail of the geodata portal and other Afroline's databases. 
And we round off this webinar series with the data journey approach to development programs. You can register for the uh, webinars using the, the link below or simply going to the Afro Alliance website and, and searching for webinars there. So thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Um, I hope you um, have enjoyed learning a bit more about Afro Alliance. Um, and indeed, please feel very warmly invited um, to, to join our network, to join our work, to join this community so that we can jointly take this uh, work forward and help uh, strengthen the um, ability of African stakeholders to face climate change impacts um, in 2021 and beyond. Thank you very much. Goodbye.